Hello, hello. My name is Lisa Christensen. I wanted to share with you how I like to paint with markers. Yes, you heard me right. I'm painting with carbon markers or uh, water soluble markers and I thought this would be a fun class to show you how I paint with carbon markers and get a more illustrative look in your stamping and in your cards. So I am using this stamp by Colorado Craft Company. Uh, they have <laughs> this image. Um, it's illustrated by Anita Jerem, and she does um, a couple of um, children books as well that are just beautiful. Um, anyways, um, Better Together is the stamp set, and it's by Colorado Craft Company. I already stamped this onto 140-pound watercolor paper with black archival ink that is waterproof. And that's the that's the process of that. So pretty simple. Um, I always like to start with the sky first, and I'm actually going to use cyan. Any cool blue, any of your blues that you love for the sky is going to work for this. Um, I like to start with the sky first because uh, it kind of makes everything else work. And I'm going to negative paint first. If you're not used to negative painting, um, it's a we're we're not we're not painting the image. We're painting everything but what you see, and that's called negative painting. Um, artists use it all the time to get what they are wanting, and I'm just wetting my brush, and then I'm going to pick up some of this, and I'm just going to kind of dab it, and the water goes where. Um, the ink goes where the water is, so I don't have to worry about it um, getting into the animals because I don't have water where the animals are, which makes it really convenient to be quite honest. And I have a bit more of a puddle here, so I just want to make sure that the water isn't going to go over because there is still some of that chance, but look at that. I and mean, it just makes for a really beautiful way. And then what I'll do is I'll just um, get more water on my brush. And I'm just gonna kind of feather that out until until I'm happy with where I want the blue to be. And this is the cyan. Um, if you are new to watercolor, uh, I really like watercolor markers because they're very versatile and they can do a lot of fun things. You can um, I'll, I'll hopefully do a lot more tutorials on watercolor markers. It's, and they're not marketed as watercolor markers. Let's be real here. Um, marketing is all about trying to sell your stuff. So I personally think that Karin could, Karin markers could definitely sell their um, markers as watercolor markers, but they they market it as um, illustration markers, which in the art world that means I can do a whole lot of things with illustration markers. If that makes any sense at all. Sometimes. Um, when we find new ways to use the same product, you know, stretch your product further. But anyways, now this is a really blue, and that's okay, because um, I will use water to feather that out with clean water, and I'll show you. I wanted it to be, so I it's, this is a clean brush. I just dabbed it off with some water because I don't want it to be juicy. I don't want my brush to be super juicy. Um, I would say that this is like a tea type consistency. And I love these markers for skies because skies are not just one color or one shade usually. And if I wanted to, I could add another blue or a purple, but, um, I'm trying to just make a very simple watercolor, uh, sky. Okay. So I got mostly around the animals. I'm not quite done yet. I still have to get this little porcupine done. And I often paint upside down because um, it's easier. <laughs> um, and it makes me forget what I'm actually painting. So I'm just worrying on the technique. Okay, so for this guy, so I got the negative painting around the animals and I really like how that's looking. Now, because this is a five by seven and I'm actually gonna paint this and I think I'm gonna give this to my husband for Father's Day or for um, anniversary, we'll see. But I just love it so much that I thought, um, yeah, <laughs> I need to paint this and frame it. 
Um, which is such a fun way to give a gift, I think. Um, and why not? I bet he'll really love it. Okay, so I'm getting this really wet. And now, if you've... I have painted... I just did a cloud video. There's not much different. Um, I'm going to tilt my paper. Um, the cloud video that I did kind of shows how I did this, but I'll show again. I like to tilt my paper, so gravity is working with me. And I'm just going to add... It's the same principle. The ink, you just want a lot of water. And then, once you kind of... I don't ever mind. I use 140 pound watercolor paper so I can move my paper around and it's not going to hurt it. But the water cl clouds are what? Like made out of water, right? So it makes sense that you need a lot of water to make this guy. So I'm going to leave that at that. I might, because it's so wet, I could sprinkle some on very gently and lightly and it's not going to look funky. And I really like how that's looking. Okay, it's gonna dry. It's it's quite wet. You can kind of see how wet this, how wet the water is. So um, compared to <laughs> the rest. So this is pretty dry. I can do pretty much whatever I want with it. I did see a spot right there that I did not get. So I'm just gonna lightly add that in. Oh, and I see another spot. So I'm gonna. Just lightly add a couple more spots in the stamp. I think I've painted this image probably four or five times now, so I'm pretty much sure where exactly my spots are for, for each. Um, but. Oh, so perfect. Okay, I'm going to let that go because if I mess with the sky anymore, it's not going to look beautiful. Okay, now I get to choose what I want my rabbit to look like. I, like I, here is an example of one that I did. Um, this is with Kiritake watercolor, so a Japanese watercolor, um, and I love it. I think the colors are beautiful, so I'm going to kind of gauge my color selection from this, and I'll have it, um, over to the side and reference it when I need to. But I'm going to start with the rabbit and I'm going to clean off my blendable palette. Uh, so what I what I like to do is I like to color, I like to put ink on the palette and then um, this is a, this is a, well, hold on, let me, this is a Tombow blendable palette, but really what you could use is anything that the ink will um, not, like it's just a laminated piece of paper. You can even see that it's laminated. So, um, and then on the back it has the Tombow's colors on it. Um, whatever. I use, I use all sorts of brands and art supplies to get what I want. Um, so I don't care. So with this guy, I just colored on the blue onto the blendable palette. I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to start with the yellow ochre because um, that's the that's the lightest color that I want and I'm not going for like a perfection realism I really just want it to look illustrated and the difference between realism and illustrated is um, illustration usually you get to make your own choices and you get to kind of tell the story a little bit more um, I don't know, you can I, I feel like illustration is a little bit more uh, free, free giving, forgiving. There we go. That's the word. <laughs> Anyways, this is a really light wash of yellow ochre. If you have a Tombow, if you're using Tombow, which is the same thing, I'm, this is no different than Tombow markers. So if you have Tombow markers, you can do this as well. I just wanted to use Karin markers. Um, Here's a tail, and the tail is going to be pretty white. Remember, watercolor always draws, dries lighter. Okay, now I can go into my darker brown. My, I'm, this is more of like a, I would say it's on the reddish side of brown. Remember, neutrals have different color properties, and so you can't just say brown and watercolor because 
that's not really a thing. You can say reddish brown or greenish brown. And so I'm just giving the idea that this rabbit is not one color. Because I don't think too many rabbits are just one color. My, ins my thought process for this is, of course, Winnie the Pooh and the rabbit. And that's probably why I chose these colors. Um, I'm going to give a little bit more on the ears. After I get that little spot. And so what I'm doing with this is this is a wet and to wet technique. So I didn't wait for the yellow to dry. I just went straight in with my brown and that's a wet on to wet technique. Um, if your yellow dried before you could put the brown on, just wet it again. The ink is already there. It's not going to move. Um, just wet it again and then you'll get that nice blend. In fact, I'm going to probably do a little bit more on this side. I'm going to dry my brush, pick up some ink, and that will hopefully make it darker on this one side. We'll see. Yeah, I like that. Okay, now we can go into um, the other animals. I always like to get the biggest one done first. Um, now for the fox, it is very red-ish. So I'm going to continue with the copper brown, which makes sense because copper seems like a little, and I'm, I'm adding quite a bit actually and then that's going to be the base color and then I'll go in with a darker brown if I feel like I need to which I will um, but I want this to be pretty red and I might even add some yellow ochre just to get it to look a bit more like an orangey color because I think foxes are I like this red orangey color and don't forget the little hands, holding the hands. That's like the cutest part of the whole thing. I did a fox, I thought, yeah, I did a fox, um, painted a cute fox for a Christmas card once. Um, that's always fun. Okay, so with the fox, the one thing that I love about coloring with stamps is it kind of tells you where where the illustrator says, okay, this is what you need to make it darker. And so I just add a little bit more of my dark color. This is um, sepia, which if you want your fox to be more reddish, add a darker reddish. Like I could have just gone in with copper. And maybe I will show you with the ears. You know, I could just go gone in without any watercolor and done copper, which I'll do that right now. Why not? Variety is the spice of life. Yeah, cute. And now if I feel like I need it to blend a little bit more, I just take my brush, get off the extra water. The brush is damp. It's not juicy. I can blend that. Dry my brush, clean my brush off. And then just kind of control the water. I hope this makes sense. I hope you guys um, practice. You know, this is my fifth time coloring this, so I pretty much know exactly how I want to color each animal. Um, you might find that you like it a different way. Okay, so I got this brownish, reddish color. I need to definitely do some uh, compliments and so we're gonna go with a lighter color and squirrels are all sorts of different colors depending on where you live and what trees they get their nuts from so this is definitely not this is a start this is this color is blush it's the same color that I used um, nope it's a different color um, I used yellow ochre on the bunny. This is a lighter yellow. I wouldn't call it, yeah, it's a yellow. <laughs> I don't know what else it would be. It's more of a yellow than anything. Um, it's just a base, base color. Now, I did not use my blendable palette because I didn't need to. The extra stuff that's on the palette, I'm just gonna pick up with my brush. 
and I'm just going to paint. I want the tail to be that same color. So whatever's on my palette is what's on my brush. Like I'm not, I didn't, but it gives it just enough of a different variation. Now I can do my grays. And I have a cool gray and I have a neutral gray. Um, because we have used so much warm, I'm going to change it up and do a little bit more cool so it blends in a little bit closer to the sky since the sky is so blue. Um, you might choose to do something different. but I'm gonna, Now the mouse, I want it to just be light. And that might be too light, but i got to start somewhere. I'd rather be light than dark. Now I can just go in with a wet into wet technique. And I think what I'm going to have to do, I want that little tail to pop just a tiny bit. So I'm going to take my cool gray and I'm just going to kind of outline it. It's already wet, so it's just going to bleed. But it's so fun to see it bleed and it doesn't hurt your markers. At least it doesn't for me. I don't know. If you're worried about your about water getting on your tip of the marker, then use a brush. But I don't seem to ever have a problem with it. Okay, so now that I have my gray on, I'm going to do the same thing to this little porcupine. That's what I'm calling it. I don't know, maybe it's a different color. And again, I'm going to kind of look where my lines are, and it looks like... The illustrator Anita says, okay, you want it to be darker on the left side. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to use my little tip to draw its little feet because it's too small to use a brush. And I'll do the same with my hand. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to take my pink. I forgot to. There's my skin color. And I might use a different, but we'll try it. I think that'll work. Oh, yeah, that's going to work out perfect. In fact, because there's some pink right there, I'm just going to add some pink right in the mouse, maybe around his ears, just to give it some color. It's not going to probably matter. <laughs> no one's going to say, oh, you put pink on the mouse, but I'll know. Um, and that's good enough. And I think I really kind of like the idea of having just a tiny bit of pink. A darker pink so I'm going to add this uh, cerise color to the belly I just want a little I just want the pink to pop just a tiny bit because after all he's a cute little porcupine there all right now the two pinks together will neutralize the color so it's not bubblegum pink but it's still pretty darn cute okay so the water dried and look at that beautiful background that's just perfect now let's do the green so I'm going to clean my palette off again you guys I'm if I had a baby wipe handy I would use a baby wipe but I have a towel and a towel works just fine you just have to get your palette a little bit wet uh, Lindsay, the frugal crafter, says, don't ever waste your ink. So she'll, like, have a piece of scrap paper next to her and, um, do, like, I don't know, like a abstract sort of inky panel for a card, but I'm like, it's just ink. <laughs> I don't need it. All right, so for the grass, um, I love, li I love a lime green, a bright green, with a muted green. Those two together just make my heart happy. So I'm going to add a whole bunch. And I, I like to do a wet onto wet because I want it to be loose and fluid. And if I do any other things, it's not going to be. Now you, I, I am going to have to fix this, this sky a little bit because I'm not loving this bloom right down here. But I'm not going to fix it now. I'm just going to glaze over it in a little bit. Now I can go in with my lighter green and I'm going to go right up to that blue. I'm not, I mean, I'm paying attention where my lines are, but at some point, like right here, I have to decide, okay, this is going to be grass and that's going to be 
this guy. And I'm using quite a lot of water here, probably more than enough, but I want to get it pretty wet. I feel like Anita's um, illustrations are very um, open, meaning if I were to cut it short, like this is a smaller piece, so, um, but I needed, I needed it to look like it's bigger than it was, so that's why I only did a little bit of color down here. Um, because this is a five by seven, I thought I'm going to have to add a little bit more green. All right. So this green becomes more like a brown, but when you put them together, they really act quite nice. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of making lines sort of like the sky. I'm not thinking too much about it. And maybe I just want to say here's a little bit of a shadow. Now... What I think I'll do is I'll actually draw on it. Um, and I'm just doing like little um, flicks for grass. I can go in and it's just going to blend with the water that I just put down and that's quite alright. But oh my gosh, it makes for such a fun piece. Um, yeah, and then I'll keep going back and forth. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to blend my colors. All right, I'm afraid that if I do a whole lot more to it, I'm going to wish I hadn't, but if you know your plan, you can kind of get in and get out, so to speak. And that's what I'm doing. It's like, have my vision, get in, get out. Don't be messing around. <laughs> okay. I'm just smoothing out my hard edges. All right, let's fix this cloud real quick and then I'm calling it done. First off, I like to see maybe, yeah, I was afraid of that. I can't just smooth it over with water. That that ship has sailed. So next item that I could do is I'm this shape that I don't love, this little curve bloom thing. Well we're just gonna we're just gonna make it look like it was part of the thing. I'm even going to take that ink and I'm going to make it go down a little bit further. And I think that's actually going to do it. Now I still can't do anything about this blob right there, but that looks a lot better. In fact, maybe I'll just make a cloud, like a blue sky thing right here. My my hope is is that it'll frame, and so it's not gonna look. It's gonna look artistic. <laughs> and it was fun to do, right? Like my thing is paint because it's fun. It makes me happy. It makes the person I'm giving it to happy. There, I like that. That'll work. Okay. All right. What do you think? That'll work for a beautiful card or 5x7 watercolor panel, and I'm quite happy with it. So um, let me know in the comments below what you think, and we will talk to you soon.